Ladies and gentlemen, Silent Mike back with another video. Today we're going to talk about the dumbest exercises in the history of man and the history of exercising. But first, you guys know what we got to do. Let's try to hit 1,500 likes. I think we can do it. Subs are up. Likes are up. Y'all support in the comments is absolutely delicious. I appreciate you. So be sure to give this thing a thumbs up. Comment below in the, in the comments. I'm going to be in there answering questions all day long for the first day of every new video. I'm down there smashing them out, talking to you guys, interacting with you guys. So let me know what you want me to cover in the upcoming videos. New videos Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday. Let's dig in. So I think all fitness trends go in, in circles. You know, We started back in the day cavemen moving rocks and lifting logs and people started to you know get in shape and get strong that way and you know a little bit more modern man started obviously with different tools such as the barbell one of the first big tools the dumbbell um, kind of strict lifting iron lifting very efficient uh, but as technology started to get around you know we're talking 80s even 90s even early 2000s even now for I think pop culture you know hopefully those that are in this video Hopefully we got some new friends in here, but the majority of people that you know follow my journey, this YouTube channel over the last five years, my internet journey over the last eight or ten years, my boys Omar Isaf, Alan Thrall, all of us are kind of in this niche that we understand the barbell is so efficient, not only uh, mentally and physically allows us to progress in the gym, uh, but it's the most efficient way to put on muscle and build strength for basically everyone, from grandma all the way to NFL uh, linebacker. But in the 80s, 90s, even 2000s, early 2000s, and now, like I said, we've started to try to throw in more technology into something that doesn't really need it. And so even, you know, the basics of machines and do machines have value and a purpose and are a good tool in the gym? 1000% yes. But if I'm, you know, squatting, benching, deadlifting, overhead pressing, maybe even cleans, doing some plyos, playing some sports in the 70s, and I see all these dumb guys on these machines... I would probably bash them thinking that they're soft, thinking that, you know, there's no stability in these machines, thinking that they're pretty much useless. And there's gimmicks. I did this gimmick video. You guys seem to enjoy it. There's layers to gimmicks and it's based on one, the knowledge we have and two, kind of the camp we come from. Obviously, I come from a strength and conditioning camp, playing basketball and coaching powerlifting for so long. So I love the basics. But as you introduce new things, I'm sure there's something in my past that I thought was dumb and I thought was a gimmick but turned out to be a decent tool. But as you can imagine, put yourself in a 70s mindset, we're big burly men doing some power lifting, and we see these machines and we think they're stupid. Now, obviously with the internet um, and being an influencer and being a fitzbo and being a, uh, what else are we? Content creator and uh, being an entrepreneur, uh, being able to build brands and companies and share with our communities on the internet, which I am absolutely blessed for you guys to have my back and it blessed to have this life I have, but people might take advantage of that and sell even crappier things. Um, there's also lack of education and personal training. Um, people don't really take that job so seriously in the most typical personal trainer or coach, uh, and so people start to throw all these gimmicks together. You know, I guess the typical ones, I bashed jaws or size a while ago, and I, and I stand by that statement. That might be top one dumbest thing I've ever seen. If you wanna get your jaw working, why don't you just buy some bubble gum or something? Why am I chewing on this rubber what seems to be sex toy. Uh, two, the one that gets biggest bash is the basu ball. Um, and so all of these things, basically what I'm breaking down to with my history lesson, that wasn't such good of a history lesson, is that every exercise or tool is only as dumb as its coach, its user, or its application. I actually don't think, you know, I think, I, I think there's two sides to this thing. Some people say, there's no such thing as dumb, dumb tools or dumb exercises, just dumb people. I agree there's dumb people. Some people also say no such thing as a dumb question. I think there's such thing as a dumb question. Now, the only time I believe that exercises get dumb, I kind of agree, is the application or you're throwing too many things uh, into the blender. So does a basu ball have some application? I believe it does. Is it the best stability tool for a healthy 18 year old to get better at the bench press or to get better at football? Probably not, probably not the best application, but does it have some stability, rehab, potentially even prehab applications? I think it does. 
people don't understand what some of these gimmicks and i think a lot of them do kind of sit around stability with the basu ball people are doing one leg lunges curl the overhead while the other arms getting pulled on a band while their trainers kicking them in the stomach to work on their abdominals that's when you start to get too weird and i don't know if those things are being invented because instagram these people are trying to get likes and be so different um, maybe that's something i failed in in my content career and maybe i would be the biggest fitness youtuber on the planet if i got a little bit more creative in my exercises but the truth is to build stability um, it's going to be based on proprioception and building strength if you have strength in a joint through a certain range of motion you're going to be stable there and if you have the proprioception if you have the mind connection the practice of something like a plyos or even the movement itself the body awareness then you're gonna be stable. Um, and so that's the number one goal, why we use the basics of the barbell, the squat, you know, maybe even the clean, some kind of plyo jump, depth jump, bench press, et cetera. It allows us to strengthen the muscles needed to stabilize the general joints that we're trying, talking about. And then with application of your sport or whatever it is, task you have at hand, um, the body awareness will come and you'll be more stable. I think jaws are size is the only one thing that I can't freaking think of why I would apply that to anything. And they say you got a firmer jaw or something. Now, obviously, there are muscles involved with her mouth. I just don't think it's necessary. But I think the basu ball is another one that people obviously think of. Um, I think a lot of people talk mess on CrossFit, uh, burpees, different plyometrics drills done maybe wrong. Um, something that I've probably been in the past that I can, I can make an argument either way for anything. Love to argue, love to talk, love to play devil's advocate. And I probably talked mess on people doing plyometrics exercises um, rapidly for time or conditioning. Um, something like a box jump, plyometrics in specific, is made to build explosive power and coordination in something like a sprint, a jump, a leap. Um, something, uh, you know, those are great. Uh, they, they have a great application built in with a strength program to allow you to become faster, stronger, jump higher. Some of them are a little too complex, I think, to be optimal for conditioning. Again, coming from strength and conditioning background, I like to keep things basic. If we wanna work on our conditioning, let's work on our conditioning. If we wanna work on our strength, let's work on our strength. And then whatever our task or sport is, those can be combined during there, right? Like you're gonna need strength, conditioning, agility when you're playing football and you're running back trying to find the hole, you're playing basketball uh, and you're taking some contact down the lane to try to finish a layup. Even if you're just um, wanting to be bigger, stronger, faster, those things will come together on the sports side of things. We don't need to take a deadlift at 70% and do it for as many reps as we can within 10 minutes. Now, if exercising is the goal to test yourself purely in the gym, now we can make an argument for that. If you want to take 70% of your one rep max, everybody viewing versus me, and we're going to see how many repetitions we can do in 10 minutes, that's a new game, that's a new sport, that's a new contest, that's a new task. And we can find ways to train that and be better at that, but I don't think it's necessarily optimal for anything. Deadlifts aren't even that technical, so doing them for high reps, trying to build the conditioning and the strength together, still isn't optimal in my opinion. It'll raise the risk of poor technique and perhaps injury, let alone the cleaning jerk or the snatch, which are exercises, if you're in the sport of Olympic weightlifting, to get better at Olympic weightlifting, to do lift one rep max and those more. And if you're applying them to an athlete, which I'm not a huge fan of either, because I think there's more optimal ways to build explosive triple extension, box jumps, plyos, med balls, etc. But I digress. If you wanted to do those in high reps, I just think the risk is way too high. And again, we want to separate and be most optimal. We want to build our strength as much as we can by building strength and then build our conditioning and everything in between. There's different exercises we can build some conditioning with something like a sled if you wanted to add some resistance. But I think you can do them separate and apply to your sport. Let me know what you guys have seen. Maybe it's because I'm at good strength and conditioning gyms. Maybe because it's Instagram. I think Instagram is the only place I've ever seen some of the most ridiculous things. And I think sadly it's either lack of education, poor technique, and someone being a beginner in person is all I've seen on Instagram. I've seen some crazy stuff for people trying to get a little bit more popular or making a meme or something like that. Let me know the craziest exercises, maybe the dumbest exercise you've seen or what you think is the dumbest. Comment below. Again, I think you have to see it from the other person's shoes, what the actual goal is, what the athlete is trying to achieve, 
and then we build the most optimal exercises around that. Silent Mike, new video Monday, Wednesday, Saturday. Catch you in the next one.